right, all right, all right. Happy Friday, good morning. The, uh, gosh, what is, whew, cruising on. Workout, I think it's 139, I think it is, recorded. Uh, clearly you've done so many other workouts along the way. Um, anyhow, let's get to work. We have uh, that warm up core and more series that we've been doing. And again, I'm gonna change the numbers and rhythm next week. We'll have one more similar rhythm, similar number circuit of the core and more. Uh, today we'll go through our two movement exercises, upper body, lower body. Um, if you looked at the math of the week, we did a lot of pushing quads on Monday, a lot of pulling hamstring glutes on Wednesday. Uh, you had the pulling uh, upper body, you had the pushing upper body. So a little bit of everything's been done. So today we're just gonna do a little bit of everything. And we're gonna turn the dial up a little bit with some exertion, which we haven't done uh, this week at all. So let's get warm and loose. To stick with the theme of ISO, isometric core on the 25, Monday you did the hip bridge or hamstring curl. Wednesday was the ISO quads. Today, I don't want to formally say wall sit, but the wall sit ISO calves, your ISO comes from your legs, your core sitting here in the wall sit. But if you really want to hold some weight and do some calves, you're not going to upset me either because it does stick with our theme of hamstrings, glutes, and quads, and here we are on calves. So I'll let you pick your poison on your ISO calves or loaded calves. 25 on those. Like Monday, like Wednesday, 20 rotational planks round one. We're gonna repeat those again, all the 20s. I gotcha. Your 15 is either V-ups or Supermans. Again, I'll let you dabble between V-ups and Supermans. Again, narrow the parameters. The 10 upper body. Today I'm gonna do upright rows because you can't do those on your two movement days. But I could say your other one, if you wanted to lay down and do chest flies, you could lay down and you do chest flies if you want to. That'll always be your 10. And then today, to get things warmed up, your five is either gonna be skater hops or ski hops. And again, the five is so nominal. And it really is funny, people that, oh, what do we do the five for? Literally, it's just five reps of something. <laughs> There's no magic on the five reps. All right, here we go. 25, and then this, if you want to stick with the theme of ISO, which is isometric on the first thing, get into the wall sit position, but I'm not too worried about the actual wall sit exercise, even though it's a very much part of the, the equation. 25 ISO calves, or again, if you want to stand, which I'll dabble with too, you could stand and do your regular calves, you could play with your feet with, you could stand on the edge of something, 25 ISO calves or regular calves. Round one is 20 rotational planks. You did them on Monday, you did them on Wednesday. You're gonna have your 15 either Supermans or V-ups. You can mix up those two exercises. And you're gonna have your 10 upper body. I'm gonna do upright rows today because of the components of working out. We'll have our two movement day today. Again, 25 ISO calves or regular calves, 20 rotational plank, round one only. We're gonna change the 20 on the formal core. Remember this week's label is core and more. Wednesday was probably the most, if you were to look at the types of exercises we did. Again, four rounds. Same numbers, same rhythm as Monday and Wednesday. Rotational planks, and really any plank that moves, any deviation plank, you know, uh, elevator planks and walking planks and plank scissors. You always start in your plank position, and then you deviate out of plank to the best of your abilities. So many people I watch get down on rotational planks and they start on the side, and when they go down to the middle, they're in the wrong position, or they get off their mat, whatever it is, they get uncomfortable when they get to the regular plank position. So always start in your plank position. Round one, 25 ISO calves, 20 rotational planks, 15 either V-ups, you can do V-ups on the ground or bench, or you can do Superman's. 
And of course, if you hate Superman, you can do swimmers if you really want to. 15 V ups and or Supermans. And again, you have a choice. You can stay on the ground and do 10 chest flies, or you can get off the ground based on what you chose and do 10 upright rows. You can totally mix those up. Again, a little stimuli, a couple little choices. Narrow the parameters. 10 on your upper body, like we've been doing all week long. And then five, I know skater hops is an odd number for two legs. I'm not too worried. The, the ski hops again is an odd number for a right to left direction. But it's just a number. It's just a number. Five, either ski jumps, ski hops, or skater hops. Just thinking stimuli, a little impact for your legs and your body, for your ankles and your knees and your hips and your spine, if you want to have a reason to do those things. Round two, 25. Again, ISO comes from the word isometric, which will be the wall sit version. Now I know standing calves, you can play with the load if you want to do that. I'm just looking for the calf muscle to go with the body like we've been doing it all week long. 25 ISO calves or regular calves. You got your 20 on your windshield wipers. That's where you're laying on your back for the lateral reverse crunch. 20 windshield wipers. You've got your always 15 V-ups or Supermans, you've got your always 10 upper body, and your always five ski hops or skater hops. As you can tell, we're kind of warming up, we're kind of working out, we're getting our minds ready, our bodies ready. Breathe and focus and work. 20. Windshield wipers, lateral reverse crunches. Your lower body is moving on your upper body. There's rotation of your spine. There's not really rotation of your hips. That's why I don't say rotational reverse crunches, lateral reverse crunches. 20 of those, and then you got 15 either V ups or Supermans. You can mix them up as you wish. If you do Supermans, Upper back, middle back, lower back, glutes. There is some spine mobility by all means, but I want you to look at that as your muscle building, strength training exercise, Supermans versus swimmers, which are great mobility exercise, activation exercise. So yeah, I know you have a different mindset for Supermans versus just laying on your stomach and being uncomfortable. 20 windshield wipers. 15 V-ups or Supermans, 10 either upright rows or chest flies. Again, I don't mind a touch of pace. Let's get that body going. It's Friday morning. We will have some exertion to do today to stimulate the body of the soul. Again, I'm trying to be a little ahead of you, push you just the tiniest bit. That means you don't lose motion, right? Maintain motion, increase motion, time under tension. And again, at five, you got skater hops, a lateral hopping lunge per se, or a lateral single leg squat per se, or you have your ski hops. Again, you got a little impact, you got a little motion, get the ankles ready, knees ready, hips ready. Spine ready. Work, work, work. Again, I want to be a little ahead of you. You have round two as the 25 ISO caps. You have the 20 on your windshield wipers. 15 uh, Supermans or V ups. 10 fly, chest flies or upright rows. Again, you're getting there. Five on your plyometric, right? That's been the rhythm all week. And then you have round three 25 ISO quads. Play with the width of your feet. 
right? If you're not going to make a lot of changes, the one thing I do ask you to make is, or change is your, the width of your feet. A little wider, a little narrower, standing on the edge of something. Again, the ISO would be the wall sit seated calves, which knees bent seated calves works your soleus, the underneath calf muscle, the one you can't see. That muscle supports impact. So if you were to jump and run and even bike, biking, you have constant impact per se, or load. You already have impact, you have that load, that push. Your soleus, the underneath calf muscles, handles that. The gas trucks, you can make them look pretty, right? Sunshine, you've got beautiful calves. I'm a very jealous man. However, who can jump higher? I don't know. Maybe we should have a little, uh, little thing when we get back in here. <laughs> Round three, ISO calves 25. You've got your 20 plank taps. You're in high plank position or low plank position. But the reason why high plank works so well is you can get your feet and hands as narrow as possible so you really challenge yourself on the position, right? Give it a hard position. Low plank is great too, but you gotta have a little more mobility, there's a little more shift. You gotta lift that arm, and I give myself a lot of space here. Lifting that arm, I mean, it's the same exercise. Which one has a harder position for you? Which one challenges the mechanics of the exercise? 20 plank taps, 15 V-ups, or Superman's again, 10 chest flies, or upright rows again, five plyometric, and we only have one more round to go. Yes. Again, V-ups or Superman's. Now I have had a lot of feedback this week about how sore people have been, especially after Wednesday's hamster, or sorry, Wednesday's hamstring glutes exercises Monday you had them on the warm-up series and we've done more reps on other days it's literally just how we put it together right so it has been a huge week on all of your muscles but I've had a lot of people like why am I so sore and it was just the how you warmed up the core and more got everything going you dabbled on the Five different pushing legs on Monday and the five different pulling legs on Wednesday. Maybe you adjusted the load and the weight. Again, finish strong. We're almost done with the circuit. Again, that rhythm's happened all week long. Five plyometric lateral ski hop or skater hop, sorry, and then the lateral ski hop. Either one, five. We have the one more round to go. Home stretch on this circuit, and then we're gonna turn the dial up a tiny, tiny bit. You have your 25 ISO calves for the last time. I know this is not an isometric exercise. However, there's some weight distribution as I hold one heavy weight and one hand doing my calves, and of course, you can switch your hands up as an option that can engage a little bit of core as you did straight legged calves if you want to. You got your seated wall sit calves. There's your isometric position on the legs, the core. Yadi, yadi, yadi. 25 iso calves, and then you're on your iso penguins. Third time this week. Crunch, breathe, focus, reach. Reach is a lateral crunch. Right, the, how the, you got the isometric crunch, then you have that lateral crunch. I am not rotating, it's a lateral exercise. There is no up or down or twist or rotation. Crunch, breathe, reach, reach, reach on the 20 iso penguins. And then again, you have your 10, sorry, 15 V ups or Supermans. 10 upper body flies or upright rows, five on your plyometric. I like it. Last round, 25 iso calves, 
20 ISO penguins. Or the ISO is isometric. You're in an isometric crunch position and you have this lateral motion. Then you're gonna have your 15 V-ups or Superman's last time today. We technically haven't done very many abs this week. You had 900 core and more reps. It had other things involved. There were some legs involved, hips involved, glutes involved, quads, hammies, calves. You had abs in there. You had a little up body in those circuits. Three. 100 core, sorry, 900 core and more reps. <sighs> Monday you have the 300 quad focused dynamic pushing leg reps. Wednesday you have the 300 hamstring glute pulling dynamic leg reps. <laughs> you had about 160 on the pushing upper body on Monday and 160 pulling up body on Wednesday. So again, technically you probably have done more legs, right? Technically. Circuit one will be our upper body. We're going to do an upper body two movement exercise, which is going to be our curl to press. So that's going to be very simple. I do want to stimulate you with the numbers a little bit. You have your curl to press, right? We've done it before. That'll be a 30, 24, 18, 12, and six, like we've done before. Curl to press or 15 revolutions, 12 revolutions, right? And the change in numbers, stimulate the brain a little bit. Your body, I still wanna incorporate a little bit of warming up, moving. So set one will be your mobility, set two, right, we've got agility, set three, we're gonna have plyometrics, right? We're gonna move that body a little bit, okay? When you're ready, curl, to press. Now, you can sit tall or stand tall, and or at the gym, you have the adjustable bench, which you'd probably see this exercise done online more on that second highest angle. However, for the most part, we don't have adjustable benches, right? Curl to press, don't create momentum. It is a bicep curl. You have a subtle movement. You have the shoulder press, but again, at a gym, you would have uh, just an angle so the bicep curl is a little harder, a little longer, and the push is smoother, and you can maintain the motion. Anywho, 30 total movements or 15 revolutions. That number will go down, and I'll use that word load, either physical weight increases or time under tension increases. Round one is 30 mobility. You can do standing scissors. You can do standing runners. You can do jack the lanes. Because we're gonna get into agility and plyometrics, abs and obliques, just like the other day. We're gonna hopefully get three circuits in, two movement exercises. You get a lot of work done in a short amount of time. Again, round one on each circuit is gonna be mobility. You got standing scissors, standing runners, jack the lanes. You can totally mix up your mobility for your 30 total movements. So again, the rhythm and the similarity between Monday, Wednesday, today, round one on each circuit is gonna be 30 mobility. Round two on each circuit is gonna be 30 Agility, round three on each circuit's gonna be 30 plyometrics. Round four on each circuit's gonna be 30 abs. Round five on each circuit's gonna be 25 each side. Obliques, you know me, not our first Friday together. Round one was 30 total movements or 15 revolutions. Go to 30 mobility. Lady, are you okay over there? <laughs> she like fell over. <laughs> Round two, 24 total movements or 12 revolutions, so it's a little bit less. 30 mobility didn't take very long, okay? The reps or revolutions go down on your curl to press and round or circuit one, we're gonna learn all the things you're gonna do today, making circuit two and three a little more efficient. Curl to press. So we're making this an upper body circuit. The next circuit we'll do a 
lower body, up body combo. And the last circuit will dabble between the other lower body, up body combo. We're not doing lunge curls today. How about that? You're welcome. This is an upper body circuit to learn everything. And the next two will be a lower body, up body combo. And we're going to repeat. Round two, agility. Remember, agility is quick. Agility is quiet. As agility is you are being agile. What is your ability associated? High knees, running revolutions or walking reps for 30. Butt kicks, running revolutions or walking reps. Taps. If it's bigger, harder, slower, it's reps, which isn't very many of you. If it's quicker, it's revolutions. Remember, ski hops is agility. Mountain climbers is agility. And for the most part, you are all so dang efficient and good, it's probably gonna be 30 revolutions, right? Jumping jacks is probably the only non-revolution agility exercise that I can think of for any of you, and that is all of you. All right, Julie, there's no, no excuses. Julie, she's got a big old bench. She's gonna be quick, she's gonna be agile, she's gonna be smooth, and it's gonna be revolutions. Round three, 18 total movements, or nine revolutions. I hope, and again, I know we're going kind of slow currently, I hope the heart rate is warm, getting up there. I hope you're starting to feel a little bit of a sweat, feel nice and warm. And then next circuit, you can turn that fitness dial way up. Curl to rest. That's gonna be your 18 total movements or nine revolutions. Plyometrics. Plyometrics are bigger. Plyometrics, you create more power. Plyometrics, you probably have more impact. And the revel are the reps. Jump squats are plyometrics. Split jumps, plyometrics. Burpees, for the most part, a plyometric. Skater hops, plyometric. If you have a bench, lateral bench hops. You don't need a bench, this is a helpful tool. A plyometric, something bigger something louder, something more intense. 30 plyometrics, again, for the most part, is gonna be reps. You can slam a ball if you have a medicine ball to slam. You can slam a rope if you have a rope to slam. You can slam a hammer, but all those kind of incorporate your upper body a little bit as you do this upper body circuit. Jump squats, split jumps, burpees, skater hops, lateral bench hops, something bigger something louder, something more intense. Round four, you've got your 12 total curl to press, or six revolutions, and then you're gonna have 30 abs, and I will leave that door wide open on your abs, because Monday, you only did four sets of 15 sit-ups. Wednesday, you did four sets of 15 toe touches. Today, you did four sets of either Supermans or V-ups, so you can do anything. Scissors, runners, swimmers, again, you can do them if you want to. Sit-ups, toe touches, reverse crunches, V-ups. You can lay on a ball, you can lay on a bench. You can change your position. Jackknives, if you have that ability, you need something above you on a loaded vertical sit-up. Round four, 12 total movements, six revolutions, 30 formal abs preferred. Your next round will be 25 each side obliques. And then we're gonna change the two movement exercise and we're gonna push the go button and get after it. And again, as I've said before, many people do these workouts recorded and a lot of them push pause and it winds up being a longer workout so please don't be discouraged. You can always do that warm-up circuit, do this circuit, and then do the other two circuits either later on today or you can do it tomorrow because you have two more circuits to go. Let's talk about abs. Let's talk about abs, baby. Sit-ups. Your upper body is moving onto your lower body. Your lower body is a nice, good foundation and a base. 
and your upper body moves onto your lower body. Reverse crunches is the opposite. Your lower body moves onto your upper body. Your upper body is the foundation. Your upper body is not moving on a reverse crunch and your legs are moving because of your abs. V-ups, which you had a choice of earlier, that's the everything moving. The bigger, the better, the V-ups. You've got your slow scissors. It looks like your V-up, but it's alternating legs. Legs in the air, toe touches. You did them the other day. Slow runners. Again, different tools. Sit-ups, you can lay on the ground, a ball, a bench. Reverse crunches, you can lay on different things too. You can even do hanging abs, right? Leon builds cabinets, so he probably built himself a nice big uh, Roman chair. That's your next homework assignment, Leon. Build a Roman chair, and you can do hanging abs, either in a chair position or in a hanging position, and the hanging abs is kind of like reverse crunch. I can go over that one differently because of shoulders and backs. 30 abs on this round, and of course you're gonna do it later on. The last round, you've got your six total movement on your curl to press, which is three revolutions. And then again, I want to leave the door open on your obliques, 25 right and 25 left. If my math serves me correct, that's 50 total movements. Right, Brian? Yes, 50 total. 25 plus 25. Carry the one. Yes. As you can tell, I'm feeling a little Friday sassy today. <laughs> it happens sometimes. Round five. Again, you're going to do it hopefully two more times a day. You can do any oblique. The easiest one, I didn't say, I don't say easy, sorry. The, the, the most efficient one is not laying on the ground. So you have your standing oblique, left hand is your right oblique, and right hand is your left oblique. That's the most efficient one. You do call them loaded obliques too, and that requires load, either physical weight or time. Double lateral leg lifts is technically probably the most loaded oblique for everybody, but the downside is you gotta get on the ground, but when your obliques are pulling both of your legs up, well, take your body weight, potentially divide it by two, and potentially that's how much your oblique is pulling up. However, your down leg helps, blah, 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 blah. So, potentially are the key words there. All right, we're going to transition. We're going to get after this thing. If you're not ready, cool. You know I'm going to talk about it. Circuit two, you've got your stiff legged row, which you've done before. Well, guess what muscle you did on Wednesday, Rob? You did your hamstrings and your glutes. So, circuit two is going to be stiff legged rows to loosen up all of those hamstrings and glutes. And remember, on Wednesday, you had a choice on your pulling. Maybe you did trap rows, maybe you didn't. Circuit one was bicep curls and shoulder presses. Again, maybe you did a lot of those on Monday and Wednesday. Round one of the next circuit, 30 total movements or 15 revolutions on your stiff-legged deadlift row. That's round one. You're gonna go back and do 30 on your mobility again. You can do standing scissors, standing runners, jack la lanes. Again, I wanna be ahead of you because I don't want you to rest from this point on your green light to just go get some. Number one rule, don't lose motion. When it comes to fitness, fitness, you're allowed to sacrifice weight so you can maintain motion, so you do hit your reps, reps without taking breaks, okay? So rest is low, motion is high, load is adjusted, green lights go. Round one of circuit two, 30 total stiff-legged rows is 15 revolutions, and then you have your 30 mobility again. Standing scissors, standing runners, jack the legs. You're gonna go at your pace. You're gonna adjust your weights. You could keep your weights super high. You could slow it down. I'm cool on that. Get after it. Green light. Go get this circuit. Don't wait for me, Preeti. 
right? Friday morning, do not wait for me. Work, work, work. Get round one, 30 total movements, 15 revolutions on your stiff-legged row, 30 mobility, standing scissors, standing runners, jack and lanes, and I want the green light to get after it a little bit, please. Then you'll do the 30 mobility round one. You'll do the 30 agility round two, the 30 plyometric round three, the 30 ab round four, the 25 each side on the obliques last round. And then if you have the time and energy, we'll do the one more circuit. Yes. Round two when you get there, 24 total movements, 12 revolutions. Now. The green light to go is there, right? The stiff-legged rows, you do need to be mindful on that stiff-legged row. You have a longer lengthening component. You're in a precarious position when you do that row. Hips, 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 hamstrings, glutes, posture, and then a really good middle back exercise. Technically, it's a trap, lat, glute, hamstring, posterior chain, you can call that, when you work almost your whole posterior muscle group, or muscle groups, as you say. Round two, 24 total movements, 12 revolutions, 30 on your agility, high knees, running revolutions, walking reps, butt kicks, running revolutions, walking reps, jumping jacks, basically reps, taps, Harder, higher, bigger rev uh, reps, quicker, your ability, your efficiency, revolutions, ski hops, pick something to hop over briefly, a little thing. There are bigger lateral ski hops that you hop over something bigger. And I know you guys missed the uh, 10 set agility box progression. Hey, I remember the 10 different right leg lead runnings and left leg lead runnings and the box jumps and a straddle runnings uh, coming your way soon when I get to see you. How about that? Round two, 24 total movements, 12 revolutions, 30 on your agility. You are being agile. What is your ability associated to that? Can you be quick, quiet, and efficient? Round three, 18 total movements, nine revolutions. Heart rate creeps back up. Mobility, agility, plyometrics, abs, obliques. Round three, 18 total movements. Nine revolutions. Breathe, focus, work. Oh yes. Again, when you get those plyometrics, you've got power being created by you, possibly, right, for the most part, you're gonna have impact. Jump squat, split jumps, burpees, skater hops, lateral bench hops. Something bigger. It still should be fairly quiet unless you're slamming a ball, but skater hops is a big, quiet exercise. Jump squats, again, a big, Quiet exercise should be powerful. Now rope slams and ball slams and sledgehammers. A little louder, a little more oomph. Round three, 18 total movements. Nine revolutions on your stiff-legged row. 30 plyometrics. Round four, again, I'm not saying you should be there. You've got your 12 total movements. Six revolutions. And then you're on your 30, uh, 30 abs. You could lay on the ground, you could lay on a ball, you could lay on a bench. Sit-ups have a bunch of different positions, body and legs. Reverse crunches, you can make subtle changes on what you lay on, the length of your legs, whether your legs are crossed or not. Again, hanging abs is a position. It requires a tool. For people that have bad low backs, hanging abs are great. For people that have bad shoulders, hanging abs are not great.
and that door is open, green light is on, don't wait for me. The downside is the two movement exercises is going to slow you down a little bit. Round four, 12 total movements, six revolutions, 30 on your abs. And again, mathematically, we haven't done very many abs this week. We did a ton of core and more stuff, and then plenty of upper body, lower body, and today we're dabbling between everything. Round five, again, green lights on. It's the last round of this circuit. You're gonna switch it to the next circuit and keep going. Nothing will unbalance you if you have to leave. Last round is your six total movements, three revolutions, and you'll have your 25 each side obliques. And all I ask on a stiff-legged row, when you have a pace fitness circuit, is you focus on the long, lengthening component, the stiff-legged exercise, and then make sure you focus on that row because you are in an interesting position on the stiff-legged row. Round five, six total movements, three revolutions, 25 each side obliques, downside hip dips. If you want to do hip dips, the downside is pushing you up. Again, you can do standing obliques if you want to. You've got double lateral leg lifts. The upside is pulling your legs up. You've got laying on your back, knees to one side for your side crunches. That's a great mobility and flexibility exercise. Mobility of hips and spine, flexibility of muscles around them. It's a good oblique to do if you haven't done it in a while. It's not the hardest and best oblique, but it is a good oblique exercise. Just to be a little ahead of you, I don't want you to stop. All right, get this thing going. The last circuit again, you've done it many, many, many times. And I know we did curl to press earlier. We're now on our squat to press. We have the 30 total movements, 15 revolutions on your squat to press. So yeah, today you could label a little bit more shoulders, right, with the pushing. Based on what you did on Monday would affect that. Monday you had the push-ups and our core and more circuit, and then you have the choice of different pushing muscles and exercises to do. So potentially you did shoulders. You have the curls and then circuit one. Again, probably an easier exercise that you could have done on Wednesday. That last circuit was the stiff leg and row. Again, potentially those movements were done. The stiff leg is definitely done. Again, last circuit, 30 total squat presses or 15 revolutions. Remember that squat. You got a lot of hips, you got a lot of glutes, you got a lot of eyes, you got a lot of thighs, and those words remind you that your hips move a ton. A ton of movement starts at your hips. You got your glutes, they should always turn on. Maybe you feel them from your Monday, Wednesday workout. Eyes, that's a reminder of posture. You're looking out in front of you. Don't look down, don't look up. And then thighs, your legs are working more. I don't want it to be a back exercise. It is supporting the work, but your legs are working more. 30 total movements, 10 on your, sorry, about 10, 15 revolutions. And then again, you have your 30 mobility for the last time today. Utilize this mobility to lengthen those hamstrings and glutes on standing scissors, right? You're mobile and you're lengthening. So there's flexibility per se. You've got your standing runners again, more mobility, rhythm, rotation. Feel good starting your last and final circuit. And of course, your jack of the lanes 
is truly a dynamic stretching exercise. You could play with the width of your feet on your jack lanes. Breathe and work. Again, round one of the last circuit. 30 total squat press, 15 revolutions, 30 on your mobility. Turn that dial up, don't wait for me. Round two, 24 total movements, 12 revolutions on your squat press. And they're gonna have your 30 agility for the last time today. Again, similar-esque as far as changing the rounds like Monday, Wednesday, different components with the mobility, agility, plyometrics, abs, and obliques. Kind of strong, you guys. Again, don't wait for me. I know it's probably not the fitness workout you would think of with so much diversity and slower movements, but turning the dial up, adjust your physical load, weights, maintain your motion, minimal rest. Round two, 24 total squat presses, 12 revolutions, 30 agility. Again, I dabble between all of them so you see them, not so you do a whole bunch of changes, because then you're gonna be a little efficient, inefficient. Although I applaud and I want creativity, if you ever, ever have to stop and think, oh, what should I do next? Boom, you just lost that heart rate. Go on, maintain that heart rate, maintain that fitness. Increase the oomph of the day. Again, round two, 24 total squat presses, 12 revolutions, 30 agility. Remember, my intent is always to be a little bit ahead of you. You're the one doing all the reps. I'm just dabbling with you. Round three is your 18 total squat presses. You got your nine revolutions. You've got your 30 plyometrics. Jump squats, split jumps, burpees, skater hops, lateral bench hops. Of course, if you can throw something, slam something, hit something, kick something, give a kick bag, and you're efficient and it's ready, kicking a bag 30 times will be a fun, challenging exertion. I know not all people have that tool. Of course, we rarely, rarely use it myself. Round three, 18 total squat presses, 30 plyometrics. You're on the home stretch. bigger, there's a lot more power created, there's more impact as a result, however, it can still be quiet, powerful, if you, if you do, if you are loud, if there is impact, that's going to be a joint issue, when it's quiet, that means you're actually using your muscles to land, you're using your muscles and power and momentum to explode and move, that also means you're using your muscles to land, round three was the 18 total squat presses, 30 plyometrics, it's here, it's here, let's go. Round four is your 12 total squat presses, your 30 on your formal abs, almost done. Keep your focus. Heart rate up, blood flowing, temperature rising in a good way, internal temperature. Working, breathing, sweating. We had the curl press for more body focus, circuit one, stiff legged row, again, body, lower body, but also to move and use the muscles you used on Wednesday, the squat press, again, move and use the muscles you did on Monday, rhythm, pace, focus. Round four. 12, squat, press, 30, abs. Oh, 
Home stretch, you guys. Go get it. 30 abs. Sit-ups. There's so many different adjustments. Reverse crunches. There are a couple of positions and adjustments. V-ups. Again, round or bench V-ups. Legs straight or knees bent V-ups. A couple different varieties there. Toe touches, keeping your legs up. Scissors if you want them. Runners if you want them. Swimmers. Again, those are also labeled abs core, right? Here it is, guys. Last round. Like Monday, like Wednesday, the workout kind of just stops. That doesn't mean you can't stretch for a little while. You can't do some light cardio. Maybe you just lay down and be mindful for three to five minutes. Pat yourself on the back physically and mentally from the workout this week and today. Maybe you go make yourself a smoothie. Maybe you go grab a whole bunch of water, hydrate. A lot of people have taken me up on my mindset when they finish a workout. There are so many great benefits. Whatever you do after a workout, your body will absorb and respond to the most. So if you want to be all tight and achy later on, go sit down and go to work. Said nobody ever. <laughs> if you want to be loose and mobile and hydrated and feeling good, a touch of cardio, a touch of stretching, Lots of water, good nutrition, mindfulness, right? Laying down. I've said that so many times. Closing your eyes for a second. Sunshine and Leon, they used to have loofah parties in the shower. You guys, let's get back to loofah party Friday. Bring your own loofah. Tom brought his today, right, Tom? Loofah party. Come on, somebody, I got only one person. Melina's over there shaking her head and turned around. So it wasn't that bad of a joke. I mean, it was bad. <laughs> Preeti, like, what the heck is a loofah? Well, Google loofah, and then you'll see Sunshine's picture. <laughs> oh, it's no, it's bad. It's Friday, I'm sorry, it's Friday. Again, when you get done to the 25 each side obliques, again, the workout feels like it stops. It does, you did it all. Stretch for a couple minutes if you have time. Lay down, close your eyes, be mindful. Get rid of the bad jokes that they keep telling. Go get some water, go get some hydration. Go get your protein, go get your good complex carbohydrates. Besides that, pat yourself on the back, have a beautiful, wonderful Friday. Go Tom Brady and the Buccaneers, that's my it's my wish, my hope, the old quarterbacks, the old guys got to prevail.